one second. Okay, my bad. Okay, um, so again, if you click on that link um, in the on the training uh, registration page, it's gonna it should take you to this document. Um, and we're gonna step through then the different um, options within the mid-year contract um, uh, program, and then how the system's calculating those values, and just some tips and tricks about each of those, because um, you know they can be confusing um, based on what option the user is choosing. So I'm hopeful that when districts are making these kind of changes, even just, you know, starting out the school year with their regular contracts, they're doing something to double check this. So not just assuming the system is correct, they're, you know, manually calculating something on paper, or they have something, um, some sort of spreadsheet that they're putting their numbers into, and that's helping them double check what's on the system. And that's what this document also is intended to do. Um, we're gonna step through you know, an example. And then at the very end, sorry for the scrolling, it actually says, you know, gives you a way to sort of double check what the system is, has figured. So you know, obviously you don't wanna be underpaying or overpaying employees. So always, always stress to double and triple check, you know, the systems calculations against something else. Um, so that's what we're gonna step through at the end of each option as well. Okay, so uh, the key to um, mid-year contract changes is actually, just like everything else in redesign, it's date driven. So I have in our example, um, dates that we're gonna use um, for all of these different options that we're gonna talk about. So the last payroll that was processed was, it ran from 9-1 to 9-15, and it was paid on 9-15. This date here becomes very important when you're doing mid-year contract changes. Um, the start date, when you go to create the new mid-year contract, had the, the date it uses, or the date you want to use is one day after the last period ending date for the last payroll that was processed. So the system is calculating, basically in this case, everything from 916 forward, okay? So in this example that we're gonna talk about, um, or basically all of these, the next three examples we're gonna talk about, this is, um, an employee that's moving from five hours to 5.7 hours, and it's gonna be paid on the next payroll, which is 9.30. I am so sorry, yes, definitely. Thank you for pointing that out. I am not good about checking that stuff. Give me one second, okay. And yes, I can definitely increase the size. Oops. Is that better? I can make it bigger if we need to. Okay, perfect. Thank you for that. Um, so again, um, everything in redesign is date driven. So the start date when you go to um, uh, create your new contract, mid-year contract change is gonna be in this case, 916, okay? So one day after the last period ending date that was processed, okay? So this handout then is gonna step you through how, it, how the um, compensation looked before. And then, as I mentioned, you know, hopefully districts are doing some kind of manual calculation to figure out what they feel the number should be um, when it's actually put in the system. So we're gonna step through how to calculate the contract obligation and then the contract amount. 
keep in mind, the contract obligation is what the system is using to pay uh, or create the pay per period, pay from basically. So this value here is what the system is gonna use then to divide by the number of pays um, to arrive at the pay per period. When you're talking about mid-year contract changes, obviously it's you know the obligation minus amount paid, minus amount docked, divided by the number of remaining pays. Okay, so in this example, we've actually calculated the obligation and an easy way to think of the obligation is it's what's already earned on the contract and then what's yet to be earned. So that's simple English. That's what the contract obligation is made up of. So in this case, um, they've earned five days, I'm sorry, five hours um, at their hourly rate, which is $19 an hour and they've worked 15 days, okay? So um, you can see here that the days worked is 15, they're, hour, they're paid hourly. So in this case, you know, it's $19 um, dollars an hour and their hours per day were five. Now, um, you know, as of, the beginning of the school year, we're going to go all the way back. So say this is a bus driver and they start out the um, contract with, you know, last year's hours in a day. And now they've reworked the route bus route. So you have to recalculate those contracts. And this goes all the way back to the beginning, the first day of um, the school year, which in this case was 825. Okay, which equates to the 15 days. Um, so they've, you know, already earned this amount and now they're going to earn 5.75 times 19 times 164, okay? So that's those two figures added together are a total of 1934, 19342, I'm sorry. So now the contract amount is a little bit different. Um, it's taking the difference in the daily rates. So the new daily rate, the old daily rate times the number of days worked plus the contract obligation. So that value is actually 19,555.75. So when you go to put create this new contract, this new mid-year contract, um, you would select the type as mid-year contract with no retro. That's what we're talking about first. So from this point forward, you know, this is um, how the, uh, I'm sorry, I think originally I said it was going back to the beginning. In this case, with no retro, which is what we're going to talk about first, it's from that point forward. So that's why we calculated 15 days at the old, and 160 days at the at 64 days at the new. I'm sorry, I'm getting my um, options confused here. So when you go to plug in um, or create this mid-year contract with no retro, um, you're going to enter the start date of 916. Okay, you'll change the hours. That's what's increasing to the 5.75. Um, in both the retirement hours and the, the new hours in a day. So that way, when it comes to retirement, those um, hours are automatically calculated correctly for you. <clears throat> and then the amount that you'll, uh, the value that you'll enter that new contract amount in is the new contract amount. So you can see here, based on the um, calculation we had above, we're going to enter that 19,555.75, that full amount, in, <clears throat> into this new contract amount. So you're, you'll enter the um, options in the fields that I listed below, and then the, the system actually calculates the remaining options for you. So their day sense raise should be zero. Um, the accrued wages are going to remain the same because it's just a mid-year contract change with no retro. 
Again, the amount earned is not gonna change. And then we're gonna calculate the new paper period by taking the contract obligation minus amount paid, minus amount docked, divided by basically the remaining number of pays, which in this case is 24. And again, as we talked, the system's gonna calculate that new contract obligation, and it's based on what's already been earned plus what's yet to be earned. So then to double check and make sure that the system is going to calculate everything correctly, you know, if I go back up here, you can see, hopefully, make this a little bigger. You can see here that this new paper period has been calculated at 751.40. So we have 751.40 times 24 remaining pays, 26 minus two. They've already been paid the 130808. So if we go down here, that then is within pennies of that new contract obligation that we calculated. Okay, so it'll pay off the cents on the final pay, just like you know, we're used to it happening. Okay, so let's, do you guys wanna see it real, in real time here? Let's see if this will be a little more helpful. So if I go to processing and then processing new contracts, I'm actually gonna delete this one out so you can see it from the start. So I'm gonna find my employee. find the position that we're creating the mid-year contract change for. And in this case, it's just gonna be a straight mid-year contract with no retro. Here's then that important date that we need to be one day after the last um, period ending date that was processed. The raise date is does not come into play here. Um, because we're not doing any kind of retro or um, it's just from this point forward. But here's where we're, we're going to enter the 5.75. 5.75. And then we'll enter our contract amount, which is 19,555.75. That should be all that we need to um, enter. And if we go back up to the top and we hit calculate, it's going to tell us that there's new values that obviously um, the paper period changed, which is what we want. You can see that the rate, the hourly rate stayed the same. We want it to be $19 an hour. Um, and it calculated then that new paper period for us. So that's where I'm saying, you know, double check what the system is calculating and calculate it backwards to make sure, is it gonna come up to that you know, original amount that we calculated that the, that the employee is to be paid, the 19,342. Okay. All right. Please, at any time, if you have any questions, um, you could feel free to unmute yourself. I'm not the best about um, looking at the chat, but I will do my very best to um, be better about that. So if you have any questions along the way, feel free to stop me. Okay, so the next, I think that covers everything that we have with the um, no retro. Okay, so the next option then is to, in the same scenario, um, the employee is changing from five hours to 5.7 hours, and it's going to be paid to be um, paid on the next pay, which is 930. And it, but it is going clear back to the beginning of day one of the school year. So I'm sorry, I got my situations mixed up earlier. So clear back to 825. Okay. So here's the five hours in a day, and it's now moving to 5.75. We're going to calculate then the same in the same manner the obligation, and then the, the contract amount. So, you know, the amount that is already earned, the 14.25, plus the amount to be earned. So 
Um, and then the differences in the daily rate times how many days they've already worked. So all three of those are gonna add up then to a contract obligation of 19, 555, 75. The contract amount then is in this case gonna be the same. So 5.7 hour, 5.75 hours times 19, um, hour, 19 um, dollars an hour times that full number of days, the 179. Okay, so here's then um, how it would look when we go to add this in the system. You would select the mid-year um, contract with retro spread over remaining pays. So it's just gonna, whatever, uh, you know, the amount that's basically owed to them from the beginning of the school year is gonna be stretched over um, the remaining number of pays, which in this case is 24. So here's, again, you're gonna, you know, that start date is super important. It's gonna be 916. Um, based on the raise date, which is in this case, all the way back to the first day of school um, or first work day, which was 825, the system will calculate then the day since raise. And this is based on the job calendar that the that this compensation is pointing to, and then the number of work days from you know the um, date that you enter in the raise field to the last period ending date. So basically, in this case, eight twenty five through nine fifteen. So that job calendar had fifteen days on it, and then. Um, again, you'll update um, the re new retirement hours and the new hours in a day um, to be those new hours of 5.75. We calculated above the new contract amount. So the system then um, calculates the obligation based on the, the value that you put in the contract amount and what's already happened. So in this case, they are the same. Um, and then you can see that the system calculates out that new pay per period, 760.32. So again, you'll put in, um, you know, I've outlined here what values you're actually gonna, what fields you're gonna actually enter values in. And then the system will populate these values, the day since raised, the new accrued, the new amount earned, um, the new pay per period, and the new contract obligation based on the values that are already there um, and um, what you've entered in the new contract amount and the, the, the various fields above. So again, in this case, to make sure that it's gonna pay out correctly, you would take the pay per period times the remaining number of pays plus the amount they've already been paid. Um, and that then, calculates out again with, in this case, within a penny um, of each other. And so, you know, it's going to pay out correctly. Okay. One thing I just realized that I didn't put in, in these exam this example, the payout is, you know, obviously you have to factor in if there's been any amount docked. So um, in this case, there wasn't. So, um, but if there, you know, is an amount docked, that has to be factored in because they wouldn't have been paid all of 13.0808, okay? So in this case, I'm gonna go back to our live example here, and I'm gonna change this mid-year contract um, option to be retro spread over remaining number of pays. And again, I'm gonna select the first day I want this to be affected, which was Clear back to the beginning of school, so 825 or the first workday, I should say. Um, my hours are 5.75. And down here, my new contract obligation, or I'm sorry, my uh, new contract amount. Make sure that that was right. Yes. So I'm going to hit calculate. Again, you can see that the hourly rate did not change, which is exactly what we want. 
and it calculated a new pay per period. And that new pay per period is the 76032, which was, you know, what we calculated it should be. Okay. So again, you would take 630, 630, I'm sorry, 76032 times 24. Um, and then the amount that's already been paid, if there was any DOC amount, and that should calculate out to your new contract obligation. Okay. Lots of numbers on a Friday, huh? <laughs> Hopefully your head isn't spinning too much. The third um, option then within um, the mid-year contract um, of the mid-year contract options is to lump some retro pay um, that mid-year contract amount or change. So in this case, um, this employee is moving from five hours to 5.7 hours. Again, it's effective on the next pay. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna lump sum that amount that they should have been paid that's owed to them as if it started from the very first workday, um, which again is 825. So to calculate again the obligation, we've outlined how to, to figure that. And then the amount. And again, in this case, they are exactly the same. Okay. And then going down um, to the, the actually input, inputting the information into the system, you would select the mid-year, mid-contract with lump sum retro option. We're gonna enter the raise date. When should this be effective? It's 825. The compensation start date, this should be again, one day after your last period ending date. So in this case, it's 916. Our hours are changing. So we're gonna change those to 5.75 in both the retirement hours and the new hours in a day field. And then enter in the amount that we calculated above as our new contract amount. Okay. Again, uh, the fields you know, that should populate automatically are the day since raise, the new accrued amounts, the new earned amount, the new paper period, the new contract obligation, and then obviously the retro next pay amount. So when we go down to um, our manual calculation, we should be able to take the new paper period times 24 pays remaining, plus the amount that's already paid, Again, if there was any amount docked, in this case there wasn't, So, but just um, keep that in mind. Um, and then the um, new retro, the retro pay amount of 196.21. So that calculates out within cents of what we feel, you know, what the, the employee actually should be paid. Okay, I do think getting back to the docked, yeah. So the, the new paper period, the calculation part, um, when we outline exactly how the system is calculating those values, um, that new, the doc amount is included up in those calculations. So um, just keep that in mind that there wasn't a doc amount to consider. So it's not in um, these calculations below. Okay. Lori, then yes. when, when you um, pay the individual and that retro is paid, then that retro amount will be added to the amount earned at that time? It is, exactly. Okay. Yes. It doesn't uh, get added until okay. the, they're actually paid the retro. Great question. Okay. I had that a is. district ask me that, and that's what I told him, but I just wanted to verify. Yes. And you can see here, um, Mary, in the, the new contract amount earned, um, we actually have that. So it, it hopefully will be a little more helpful because it doesn't include the retro amount. So in the new amount earned, it won't get mm -hmm. added to the amount earned until after it's paid. Yes, I saw that. And that's okay, what the district perfect. was questioning yep. was the fact that the earnings did not include the retro. And I said, well, I'm pretty sure once you pay it, it will add it at that point. That you, that's, you're exactly right. That's a great question. Thank you. You're welcome. 
Okay, so let's just, sorry, let's go back to our instance here and we can change this to the mid-year contract with lump sum retro option. Again, um, it's gonna be back to the beginning of school or the first work day. I keep saying the beginning of school, which you know might be different for different um, positions. So your teachers versus your bus drivers. So it's really the first work day um, that you want this to be effective. Um, the new compensation start date, again, one day after the last period ending date. In this case, it's the hours that are changing. So we you know, put that value in both fields. And then our new contract amount is gonna be the same. And we're gonna go up to the calculate option. Again, our hourly rate did not change, which is exactly what we want. And the system calculated a new pay per period. So in this case, because we chose the lump sum retro amount, it's actually you know, calculating the differences in those pay per periods, what the, the employee was paid versus what they should have been paid if it started from the beginning of you know, their first pay times the number of pays paid. So in this case, that difference times two pays equates to 196.21, okay? And then a new paper period of 752.14, which should be exactly what we have in our document here. Yes. Okay. Any questions before we go any further about um, anything that we talked about thus far? So this is basically, um, you know, taking you through the, the three examples of mid-year contract changes, and it's going back to the beginning of the first workday on that um, compensation. Okay, if there's anything in the chat. Um, next, we'll just go through um, the two options. Um, but in this case, it's not going back to the beginning of the contract. It's gonna be a mid-year, mid-year contract change, so to speak. So um, instead of it going back and being effective, you know, from back to 825, in this case, the board approved this change to happen on 912. So somewhere between when they started and their um, the last period ending date that was processed through a payroll on the system. Okay, so the hours again are are changing um, effective 912 to 5.75 hours. So a little bit different here, um, the obligation um, and the, the contract amount, um, you know, the amount earned um, is five hours times $19 an hour. And in this case, it's only 11 days that they've worked or should have been paid at the five hours a day. The remaining then, are paid at 5.75 hours. So you take the 5.75 hours in a day times $19 an hour. And then in this case, that you know 11 from 179, which was is the total number of days in the contract equates to 168. Okay, so that's the, the new contract days worked minus the contract days works plus the days since raised. So that amount equates to 183354. The total of those then is 19399. So that's the amount that's owed to, you know, that the, the board is obligated to pay the employee. 
So to calculate the contract amount, again, this obligation is the amount earned plus the amount to be earned. So the contract amount is the full contract amount as if it was paid as is from day one. So the new day, the daily rate minus, I'm sorry, the new daily rate minus the old daily rate times in this case 11. So that's the um, number of days that were worked at the new rate, but they haven't been paid on it. The new hours, I should say, not the new rate. So that amount equates to 156.75. And then the, the obligation amount is the 19.399. So the new contract amount is 19.555.75. So again, um, just slightly different. The raise date in this case is going to be you know, the September date, so 9-12. Um, the new compensation start date still remains one day after the last um, period ending date, so 9-16. And then we change the um, hours, update the hours in those two fields, the retirement hours and the hours in a day. And then as we calculated above, the new contract amount is that 19,555.75 amount. Okay, so it's calculating then the retro next pay field or ne retro next pay amount, the 39.24, and then the new pay per period. So again, just to, um, you know, double check things, you take the, the pay per period times the remaining number of pays um, plus the um, new contract, the amount pay, or that was already paid. You know what, Time out. I think I may have, I did so many screenshots and so many. Okay, I apologize. I think that this, this is not accurate for this particular, because we have a retro amount in there. I'm sorry. Um, I will update that. I went over this 10 times and didn't even, didn't catch that. So that makes me feel bad. I'm sorry about that. I will update that screenshot. These calculations are, are spot on for um, what, um, to double check the, the um, example we're using. It's just that screenshot isn't um, accurate. So my bad. Again, if you take 752.15 times 24 plus the amount that was already paid, that equals that amount that, that the board is obligated to pay the employee of 19,399. Okay? So there's no retro amount. That screenshot is not accurate. So I will get that fixed. Um, but to put that in the system then, We'll go back and we're going to select um, the mid-year mid-contract with retro spread over remaining pays. And again, in this case, the raise um, date is not all the way back to the beginning of um, the first workday. Um, this is going to be effective on 9-12. So the hours in a day are going to remain at the 7 point, I'm sorry, 5.75. And I think our contract amount is accurate. So if I hit calculate, again, our hourly rate stays the same. And then the paper period um, updated um, to reflect. Hmm. Okay, let me do something real quick. Is that correct? I think I must, totally messed that screenshot up and I am so sorry. So if I take 753.7, 0.79 um, times 24 plus the amount that was already paid, 13.0808, that gives us what we want. So that is correct, I think. Do a quick. Yes, it's within four cents. So I am so sorry. I will update that. Like I said, I went over this. <laughs> 10 times and didn't catch that. So um, 
This is the correct paper period, um, 75379 times 24 um, plus the amount they've already been paid, 130808 equals the 19399 and 04, but the cents obviously will be paid off on the final pay. So I apologize for that screenshot being inaccurate. Okay, are there any questions now that I've totally probably confused you on that one? Okay, so lastly then, um, this option then um, is using the lump sum retro. So again, um, they're, this employee is moving from five hours to 5.7 hours, but it's not effective back to the very beginning um, of the contract. So it's effective 912. Um, so we calculate then um, the new hours in a day times $19 an hour times 179 total days. That's the contract amount. And then the um, employee is obligated to be paid the 19,399. And that's calculated again by taking the amount earned plus the amount to be earned plus the retro. And that equals the 19,399. Okay. Oh my goodness, I think I must have had my screenshots. I don't know what I, I tried to, I will update this one as well um, because it doesn't appear that my um, retro amount is reflective of the screenshot. So I, I apologize. Like I said, I went through these over and over and um, I'll update these two uh, screenshots so you guys have exact um, the correct information in those. So again, um, basically, you know, in this case, you're going to select the um, option to um, the mid-year contract with lump sum retro option. Um, the raise date will be 912. The hours will change to from, you know, five to 5.75. And then the contract obligation, which we calculated to be the 19,555.75. So if I hit calculate, you can see here then that um, if you take 752.15 times 24 plus 13.0808, plus the retro next pay amount, that should equal the 19,399. Okay, when it comes to um, retroing amounts, um, it, it's calculated just slightly different if you're not retroing it back to the very beginning. Um, we do have that outlined in our documentation. So if you go to the new contracts chapter, and if you go to the section that says mid-year con mid-contract lump sum retro, there is um, an option that says click here to see lump sum retro calculations. So when it comes to figuring out the lump sum retro and it's not going all the way back to the beginning of the contract, you have to use what, what we call a multiplier. So Basically, you need to know, is this, this contract paid bi-weekly or semi-monthly? And then you're going to take that um, multiplier then, and it actually, you divide it by um, the day since raise, and then that's what you're multiplying the difference in the two paper periods by. So you can see that if we took the old paper period, um, which I think I have up here. If we took the old paper period, which is 654.04, and we subtract that from 752.15, 
and then divide that by, let's go back to our calculations here, the day since rays divided by, in this case, 10, you, you're gonna take that value times the difference in the paper period, and that's how the system arrives at the retro amount of 39.24. Okay, so when you're dealing with changes that aren't clear back to the beginning of the contract and it, it and you're dealing with lump sum um, amounts, you know, reference this um, multiplier section that tells you how to calculate that lump sum amount because those are a little different. Okay. All right. Again, I totally apologize for my documentation being incorrect in those two sections. I will get that updated and I'll update it on the um, uh, training page as well. So it, it will be um, accurate there. So going back to the very beginning, um, I know a lot of districts, you know, will be using this, also using this mid-year contract with no retro amount for things like um, teachers changing um, steps, um, columns and step on the steps on the salary schedule. So maybe, um, you know, they have in their negotiated agreement that if they don't turn their paperwork in during the, by a certain date or, um, if they move on the salary schedule, you know, from that point to a certain point in the school year, that mid-year contract change will be effective maybe on like the 13th pay, so the second half of the year. So in that case, um, in those situations, you know, that's when you might be using this mid-year contract with no retro. You're going to have so many, you know, um, it's going to be paid at a certain amount from the beginning of the school year to a certain point. And then from that point forward, it's gonna be a different amount. Um, so if you're wondering maybe why you would ever use that first option, um, that's one e example I, you know, uh, I know districts use um, that option for. You know, a lot of, a lot of districts are gonna be maybe using the mid-year contract program now, because again, I know bus routes can be um, you know, not established at the very beginning of the school. So they're, you know, set up based on last year and then, um, you know, change then after a certain point when those routes are established. So again, you'll be using or could be using, you know, one of those two other options, lump sum or spreading it out over the remaining pays for those types of situations. Okay. Are there any questions when it comes to anything that we talk, talked about? I am sorry for the scrolling. One last thing that I did want to mention, just because it is new um, and different, um, is just some important things to consider um, that when you activate the new compensation, so um, you know, this mid-year contract change is now activated and I can show you where that is, but hopefully you guys are all familiar with activating a contract. But once I check this box and I click activate, I can now see, and you can see how it looked before. So the contract amount, $17,005, um, a paper period of $654.04. When I click activate, as we talked in the very beginning, this contract now becomes this employee's new compensation. So it's not um, creating a new compensation like it worked before. It basically becomes their existing. So if I open this bus driver position or um, compensation, you can see what happened here. Did I not save? Maybe I didn't save my, I'm sorry. Maybe I didn't save that. I just had it up on the screen. Let's do this one more time. I'm kind of striking out this morning, aren't I? I'm sorry. Let's 
try this again. So we'll just spread this and we're gonna make this. Yeah, I bet I didn't save it. So we'll just go back to the beginning of the school year and we're gonna, and we're gonna make this 1955. We'll just put some numbers in here and I'm gonna save this. Just to make sure you always calculate, use the calculate option too, because I noticed when I just saved, my new contract obligation did not update. So always hit the calculate button so those figures that are supposed to be system calculated um, get refreshed and um, are accurate. So now we're gonna activate this. Tells us that there was a compensation activated and we are going to look at this compensation that we just activated. And you can see here that it has the new information. So my hours updated, you know, 5.75, my new contract amount, my new contract obligation, my new paper period. But unlike before, all of my existing days worked, um, you know, the um, number of pays um, paid, those figures are all retained now and carried forward. Okay, so there's no, you know, looking at multiple compensations to see a true picture of what happened throughout the school year. So what will happen then when you activate, and that's where I was going with the note that I had on the um, document, is that the system actually archives the old compensation. So it's going to archive that old record and place a compensation stop date one day less than the new um, compensation start date of that new contract, that new compensation that we just activated. Okay, so automatically the system is gonna archive the record and place a stop date on that record for you. Okay. So that's what the first two um, bullets talk about is the compensation stop date on the old record and then activating that. Another thing to keep in mind that the system is automatically going to assign a code. So we know that when you create um, a new um, contract, a new compensation, this field here is required, okay? If you leave this blank, when you activate that new compensation, it will automatically create this code for you. So it's going to be a system-generated code. And if we go down, let's see if we can figure out the right one here. That's not it. This is the right one. So you can see that the system automatically populated um, a, a system generated code. So if that's not something that districts want to remember to, you know, if they're, you know, they have a, a system down of, you know, creating those on their own, they can surely put that in. Um, but if they don't, um, because it's a required field, the system is, um, kind enough to go out and populate that for them. Okay. And that's what that third bullet here is. Um, one thing I did want to point out because we, we have had a lot of confusion on um, dates. It's kind of, it's related, but not strictly just to mid-year contract changes is um, when do I activate a compensation? OK, so a good rule of thumb for mid-year contract changes or just, you know, creating new compensations contracts is, is my comp first workday, my compensation start date within the pay period that I'm processing. So if that answer is yes, that new compensation needs to be activated. 
um, and in place before the payroll is initialized. So I think um, districts get fearful of activating compensations because they're not ready to pay on them yet. Um, it really, the system is smart enough to know that if there's a remaining um, pay to be paid on that contract um, and you have that new compensation activated because that start date is within that pay period, it actually will pull in both compensations. So the you know fiscal year 22 and the fiscal year 23 compensation, it's going to pay off the final pay in the old, you know, fiscal year 22, and it will count the work days, the days worked, I'm sorry, and then throw that amount in the amount earned. So keep that in mind that, you know, even when you're doing mid-year contract changes, like, you know, if you're hesitant on activating those right away, um, is the, the compensation start date within the pay period that I'm processing? If that answer is yes, that compensation needs to be activated. Okay, so again, not just strictly with mid-year contracts, but I thought since we're talking about contracts in general, um, you know, maybe there's some that haven't been activated yet um, and are still waiting. I don't know if that's um, really a thing yet, but while we're talking about that, because we get questions about that frequently and it, it is confusing, I, I understand. <laughs> Okay, all right, that is all I have um, regarding mid-year contract changes. Does anybody have any questions? And again, I Lori, apologize for the screenshots. I will get those changed right away. Lori, not so much a question, but a uh, comment, something that um, I encountered this week or last week. Uh, sure. We had a district who activated the um, contract for their treasurer, paid them one pay, then the treasurer turned in a uh, retirement date. So they wanted to reduce the contract to reduce the number of days and the amount to when the person was retiring. And there was also a uh, rate change or a raise, no retro in there too. Um, what we found, in order for it to calculate everything accu accurately, we had to put the contract amount as though she was going to be there for the whole 260 days, even though um, she changed the contract stop date because the original contract stop date was um, either 630 or 731 sure. of 23. Um, she changed the contract stop date, compensation stop date to 1231, but it wouldn't calculate the correct obligation, uh, hourly rate or daily rate or paper period until we made the uh, contract amount as though it was for the full 260 oh. days and not just for the number of days from the uh, 8-1 to 1231. 1231. I, yeah, I know that, and that's where it gets a little confusing, I think, is the difference between the obligation and the amount. So, you know, the system really f f like calculates things based on it happening the entire time and then backs out what's happened or what will happen, you know, um, and that's where, you know, it calculates the obligation. So I, did you send a ticket about that, Mary, or that you guys figured it out on your own? I did not. We figured okay. it out on our own. Yeah. So I did not post a ticket on no, that. You're, you're I just fine. thought it was an interesting observation yeah. that that was that when you were reducing yeah. the um, number of days, mm -hmm. um, you still, because it was already in for a greater number of days, you had to um, 
put in the contract amount as though it was the full oh, day. Yes. I will. Um, I'm going to make a note of that and see. I was going to say, I didn't remember seeing a ticket, but that doesn't mean that I overlooked it. I'm going to, I'm going to take some notes here and see. Um, again, you know, maybe we can try to make it work differently. Um, but you're exactly right. What you said, um, currently that is how it will need to be handled in order for it to work. Um, I can definitely make some notes here and I can talk to the developers to see, um, if we can make something work a little differently to make a little more sense. Cause I totally understand that that's confusing. So thank you for that. I will bring it up at our next sprint meeting and see if anybody has any thoughts on how we could make that better. Yeah, once we figured that out, it worked, calculations worked perfectly mm -hmm. to what the district had thought mm -hmm. and um, they were able to go on. No yeah, problem. yep, that that makes sense. But yes, I, I do, I mean, that contract, um, um, the contract amount does basically need to be the full amount as if it's, you know, all like in your case, 260 days. So you're absolutely right as it stands now. Okay, are there any other questions? I don't see anything in the chat. Okay, well, I appreciate everybody's time this morning. Again, um, to end your week on talking about mid-year contract changes is probably not um, <laughs> how you wanted to spend your morning. I hope everybody had lots of coffee. Um, but anyway, I do appreciate, we do appreciate your time. Um, and attendance, attendance this morning. And um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach back out and I will get those that document updated and reposted um, out on the training page. Um, everybody have a wonderful weekend and we'll talk to you soon.